Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today, I'm going to deal with a topic called women pastors or female pastors. Okay. Now, it's always been a point of contention within the Christian church, whether a woman can preach and whether she can't preach. And some pastors will say, well, my wife wanted to preach and who am I to stop her? You know, so I allowed her to preach. You know, I actually heard one pastor actually said that, saying that. Um, he knows it's wrong that women are not supposed to be pastors over men. But his wife wanted to preach. So in order to not have strife in his home, he decided to allow her to preach. Now, brothers and sisters, this is evil, right? Because... What this pastor is saying to you is that he is not the head of his household. He does not rule his household as he is supposed to, as a bishop, as a pastor, as a deacon, as the Bible says he should. Right. So if you elect yourself to be a pastor, a bishop, a deacon over multiple people, over hundreds of people, thousands of people, then that means your household should be a shining light to everybody. Okay. Now you have once another sort of people that say, oh, well, the Bible is not very clear on whether a woman should preach or can preach or not, you know, and then you have another lot of people that have, that are the charismatics, and to be honest, not just the charismatics, not just the non-denominational, but churches in general now are now open to the new age worldly thing of adding women in the church, of adding women pastors, I should say, or women bishops in the church. Um, and this is completely goes against scripture. But what they do is that they use scripture to justify it because what they would say is that when Paul was talking Paul was talking to that particular church and that was happening in that particular church but Paul never gave a commandment for everybody so they will kind of manipulate that scripture to mean whatever they want it to say and that's why it's so important to know the Bible. It's important to know your Bible and it's important to study your Bible. The Bible says study, a good workman need not be ashamed, dividing the word of truth. So it's so important to divide the word of truth because if you're not dividing the word of truth, then you're open to every wind of doctrine. Okay, you're open, you open yourself to every wind of doctrine. So it's so important to know your Bible. And if you are a baby Christian, your main aim should be studying, 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 praying, 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 fasting, 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 until you get to a stage whereby you can put precepts together. Your understanding is so good that you should, that after about a year or six months, six months to a year, you should be able to put the precepts together and actually uh, be able to rightly divide the word of God. Okay. All right. So let's now get into this topic so let's first i'm gonna first go to the apographer and the apographer was the bible that was taken out of the 1611 bible and yes it was part of the canon and that's another lie the church teaches you it teaches you that the, the apographer was not part of the canon yes it was part of the canon and it was only take up the original king james bible 1611 bible in the 1700s i believe it was the late 1700s it was taken out and it was taken out when the protestants were pulling away from the catholics that's when it was taken out okay so it's called ecclesiasticus and we're reading 25 and i'm just going to read about three general scriptures and then we're going to get into the main body of proving whether a woman can preach or not in three things i was beautified and stood up beautiful both before god and men the unity of brethren, the love of neighbours, a man and a wife that agree together. OK, so the Lord likes unity. He loves unity. OK, so let's go over it. In three things, I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God 
and men. The unity of brethren, right? So unity is very important. The unity of the brothers and the sisters is very important. The love of neighbors. Neighbor is someone of your own people, your own family of people. There were 18 nations created after the flood. And the Israelites is the nation that the Lord is dealing with now, right? So when the Lord was talking about neighbors in Leviticus 19, 18, he was talking about Israelites to Israelites, okay? So a neighbor is someone of your own family of people, right? So the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. So it is a married couple that agree together. So it's a beautiful thing when a man and a woman agree together. The Lord loves it when you have agreement between everybody. <laughs> There's an agreement. He doesn't like strife. OK, the Lord hates strife. OK. In fact, let's go to let's hold this scripture and let's go to Ecclesiasticus 28 and we're going to read. We will read uh, seven to eight. OK, remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. Abstain from strife and thou shalt diminish thy sins for a furious man will kindle strife. A sinful man disquiet, disquieted friends and make it debate among them that be at peace. OK, so the Lord does not like strife. OK, so he's saying, remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. OK. Abstain from strife. He doesn't like you abstaining from strife. And how do you abstain from strife? By following the most highest commandments and the most highest commandments today would be Christ's law. OK, so whatever Christ said to do is what we do, because Christ is now taken over from Moses and he is the commander in chief. He is our savior. He is a mas mas our Messiah and he is our king. OK. So we're under the commandments of Christ or the laws of Christ, which is the commandments of the Most High. OK, remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. The covenant of the highest wink at ignorance, abstain from strife and thou shalt diminish thy sins for a furious man will kindle strife. So if you're always blowing off at the head, you know, any little thing you blow, 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 you know, you always run in your mouth always loud, always shouting, always have to tell someone off, then you are, you are full of strife. You're, you're an angry man. Okay. So a sin, so you are supposed to abstain from that. Okay. So like a lot of the videos that we see coming out of, um, Babylon, the great, right. Which is America of the police officers troubling our people. You know, one of the things that they normally use is the fact that our people are so stressed out that our people can't resist talking. They can't resist talking. They can't resist shouting. They can't resist doing all of those things. So they, the, the people that want to harm our people, they know which button to push, to push. And they push that button and they know they're going to get a response. And that's why the Lord said you should stay away from strife. Okay. A sinful man disquieted friends and make it debate among them that be at peace. OK, so if a man is very sinful, he always wants to, to debate. He always wants to debate. Right. Because he is sinful. So he always wants to make an excuse for his wickedness. He thinks that he knows it all. He's all puffed up and pride comes before a fall. So it's very important that we I'm saying all of that to say that is important that we stick to the most highs laws. OK, so if we stick to the most highs laws, then we avoid arguments in terms of can a woman preach? You know, then there's an argument or a debate, but it's not a debate because it's clear cut in the Bible. It's very, very, very clear in the Bible that she's not supposed to preach. OK, so that kind of thing. Right. So let's now go back to Ecclesiastes 25 and let's read eight. Well, is him that dwelleth with a wife 
Well is him that dwelleth with a wife of understanding, and that heart not slipped with his tongue, and that heart not served a man more unworthy than himself. All right, let's skip down to 12. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. Okay, so let's go back up. Well is him that dwelleth with a wife of understanding, a wife of understanding, and that heart not slipped with his tongue, and that heart not served a man more unworthy than himself. Okay. Is is a semicolon, so we're going to go on to the next verse. Well, it's him. Well, it's him that heart found prudence, and he that speaketh in the ears of them that will hear. Oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom! Yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. Okay, so that's going into wisdom. Okay, so wisdom is dwelling with a wife of understanding, right, and not running out. At the mouth, you know, just running, 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 running at the mouth, right? Always wants wanting to debate something, which is pretty obvious in the Bible. Okay, twelve. A fear of the Lord is the beginning of love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto Him. So we are supposed to fear the Lord, and we are supposed to have faith. Obviously, we're under the faith of Christ. Okay, so we're under the laws of Christ, and we are under the faith of Christ. We're under the commandments of Christ and we are under the faith of Christ. Now, I said all of this to say that we are supposed to be one, right? We are supposed to be one. We're not supposed to be having debates about nonsense, right? Whereby you have in the, you, there's always a debate. Can a woman preach? Can she not preach? And then the debate goes on and on and on like it, like it, it's a debate. It's not a debate. The Bible says a woman cannot preach, <laughs> it's as simple as that she's not supposed to preach to men she's not supposed to pass the men she's not supposed to do that <laughs> it's as simple as that a woman is not supposed to pastor a man she's not supposed to preach to a man it's as simple as that that is reserve for a man so let's now get into the scriptures so let's first go to timothy 1 so we're going to first Tim timothy 3 and we're reading from 1 to 10 okay First Timothy three, reading from one to ten. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behaviour, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor striker, nor greedy, of filthy lucre, but patient, but not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So let's let's analyze this again. So this is a true saying If a man, so it has to be a man, desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. Right. So it's a good thing for a man to desire the office of a bishop. A bishop is simply a man, an elder that leads a congregation. That, that's, that's simply what a bishop is. Right. Someone who's seasoned in the word, who is leading a congregation. OK. Who's been in the word for a long time, been in the truth for a very long time and is able to lead properly. OK. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behaviour, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Right. So he, he must be of a good report and it must be a man. Right. Because it says a man and it also says he must be of one, have one wife. So it's definitely a man not given to wine, nor striker, not greedy or filthy lucre. So he's not supposed to be a drunkard. He's not supposed to be a brawler. He's not supposed to be greedy, greedy for money, nicking things all the time. And he must not be for filthy lucre, which is the prosperity gospel. The prosperity gospel is about filthy lucre. It's about people who have an obsession with your money being in their pocket. <laughs> That's what the prosperity gospel is about. Your money being in their pocket. Them living large and you living poor. That's what the prosperity doctrine is about. But patient, not a brawler and not covetous. Right. So he doesn't covet other, what other people have 
And it, it, covet just means you're, it's almost like you're envious of what somebody else is, ha what somebody else has, and you want it so desperately, right? Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Okay, so he can't be someone who's new into the truth, new into the faith. It must be someone who's a seasoned person, the person who's been in this, the truth, the faith of Christ for a very, very long time, right? Someone who's mature enough who can deliver the truth to the, to the people, okay? So let's now go to 1 Timothy Timothy. Three, and we're going to read from 13 to 16 for they that have let's read from 12 let the deacons be the husbands of one wife so again it's a male ruling their children and their own house as well so again he must be ruling his own house meaning his wife and his children very well for they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus these things Write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtst to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without con con controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believe on them in the world reached up into into glory now i read on a bit but essentially what we're taking from that is that um it's supposed to be a man and he should be able to rule his house well so let's naturally go to let's now go to titus because titus now uh precepts exactly what we just read in timothy so paul was writing to a church in Timothy, I believe. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, but the commandments of God our Saviour and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. So it was a person called Timothy, okay? So now we are going to Titus. So let's read from the beginning. Paul is servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness okay so uh to titus to titus mine own son after the com common faith grace mercy and peace from god the father and the lord jesus christ our savior so he's writing to titus okay a fellow brother in the faith okay so let's read from because we're going to and, and let's not take away from the point the point is can a woman preach? Can a woman pastor? That's that's the point. So we are going to go to Second Titus and we're reading from one to two and then we'll read from three to five. That the age, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the age man be sober, grave, meaning respectable, temperate, meaning patient, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Three, the aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. So the aged woman has her own role, okay, that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands and to love their children. Okay, so the old, the older woman is supposed to teach the younger woman or younger women to love their husbands and to love their children is so important to love your husband and love your children but they need to be taught how to do it because it's not always a natural thing so the older women right in the faith in the church is supposed to teach the younger women how to love their husband and how to love their children i can't say this uh, hard enough the older woman is supposed to teach the younger woman how to love their husband, how to love their children, because it's, because it's not always a natural thing for them to do that. OK, so an, the older woman is not supposed to be a pastor in men and trying to counsel men and trying to pastor preach to men. And no, the older woman primarily is supposed to teach the woman 
how to love your husband. How to love your husband. How is loving your husband? Loving your husband is simple. Being a help me, being a pillar of rest, and being a follower. Okay? In other words, how to submit to your husband. Yeah? That's how you love your husband. Simple as that. How do you love your children? How to take care of your children. How to take how to chastise your children. How to how to generally take care of your children. That is her role. To be discreet, chase, chase meaning pure, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So she is supposed to teach the younger women. To be obedient to their own husbands. Did it say to usurp the authority of her husband? Did it say to be on the same level of your husband? Did it say to be in a 50-50 marriage with your husband? No, it says to be obedient to your husband. So the, so the woman in general is supposed to be obedient to her own husband. Okay? So she's not allowed to preach over men. She's not allowed to lord over men. She's not allowed to usurp the authority of men. Definitely not her husband. And she's not allowed to be a pastor over men. Because she has her own role. Her own role is to teach the younger women how to love her husband. How to love her husband. How to respect her husband. How to be obedient to her husband. That is the role of the older woman. That is her function. And how to love her children. Why? Because it doesn't always come naturally. Okay? Right. So, let's read on a bit. Just to balance it out a bit. Young men likewise exalt to be sober minded in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine. Showing uncorrupt. Gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. So everybody has their role. So a man is supposed to be a pastor and a bishop, and a woman is supposed to teach the women. And your your teaching of the women is catered to how to love your husband. How to give your husband what he likes, what he loves. How to be pleasing to your husband. How to please your husband. How to order the home for your husband. How to be a helpmeet, a helper for your husband. How, how, how to love your husband. That is your role. I see these Christian whips, so called Christian women. On the pulpit, running up and down, acting like men. Contorting their voices like men. Doing the things that other charismatic preachers do, male preachers do, trying to imitate a man. That is not your place, woman, because that man shouldn't be doing that either. And that's another that's a that's a side topic. But no Christian minister calling himself a bishop or a deacon should really be be on the pulpit going on and on and on and on about God knows what and not feeding the flock. The Bible says that the way you understand the Bible, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. That's how you understand the Bible. So when you're teaching the Bible, you go from precept to precept and from line to line, you explain what it's saying and you edify the church. What you don't do is give two hours of preaching and about 15 minutes of, of going through a few scriptures and then just using about two or three scriptures and doing a whole sermon talking nonsense. That's what you don't do. But that's a side issue. <laughs> and women follow men that do that kind of thing, which is disgusting, actually. But anyhow, we've just now killed the lie that a woman is supposed to be a pastor. And it was that simple, that simple, just Opening the Bible is very is a clear as day. You don't even need a precept to go with that because it's so clear, right? You open the Bible and you see the preacher, the pastor, the bishop, the deacon is always a man. You see all the prophets in the Old Testament, they were always men. Only in exceptional circumstances, there's one or two prophetesses. But their job was very, very limited. And those prophetesses were under the authority of their husband. 
They were not doing the same job as other male prophets. No, they weren't. You know, only very, very limited. And the Lord used them for specific purposes. Whereas men, in general, we are made purposely for leadership. Okay, I'm probably jumping ahead ahead of myself a bit. But let's now go back to the scriptures. And we are now going to go to, um, where are we going to go? Let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians 5. Okay, just to go back to the point on prophetesses um, in the Old Testament. Okay, let's let's park that to one side, right? Okay, say there were prophetesses in the Old Testament. Like I said before, yes, there were a few. But what they did was very, very limited and they were still under the subjection of their husband. Okay, we're talking about the New Testament, right? And the Lord does not authorize women to be prophetesses in the New Testament, to be bishops, to be deacons, to be in any form of leadership in any ministry. The Lord says it's supposed to be men only. No exception. Okay. Now, in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, New Contract, uh, there, there has been a change in terms of the Bible prophesied in, I think it was Isaiah 3, it says a woman will encompass a, will compass a man. It means a woman will pass a man. In other words, a woman will eventually, in the future, a woman will overtake a man. Okay. I think we should go there, actually. Let's go there. So let's go to Isaiah 3. So let's hold Ephesians 5 and we're going to we're going to go to Isaiah 3. OK, so let's quickly go to Isaiah 3 and we are reading 12. OK, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy parts. The Lord standing up to plead and standing to judge the people. Right. So what it's saying is the woman will rule over over them okay a woman so it says the children are their oppressors and women rule over them so women ha, are ruling over men right so it was prophesied i mean to be honest it was happening then you know but it was kind of like in its early stages really it's been happening since genesis really but compared then when isaiah wrote this and comparing it to now it's things are a hundred thousand million times worse than it was back then because with any every generation things get worse and worse for marriage worse and worse for the family worse and worse for men and women in general okay because with each generation the the morals go take take a turn <laughs> take a turn for the worse just think about 20 years ago and 30 years ago and the things that we didn't really were okay with well not me personally but the, what the world was was okay with and what they what they wasn't okay with back then and what they're okay with now just think about it just make a list of it and then you can see that with each generation things are getting worse and worse and worse right so pretty much in the next 20 or 30 years, I don't know. I don't know if the Lord is going to allow that to happen, to be honest, because the foundation of this planet is marriage, marriage and family and raising children. So if marriage is no longer going to be honorable, then the most high might just end it all way before then. I mean, I don't think we, that this world, this current world as it is. Uh, this current kingdom has much to go anyway. I think we're already on the line anyway. It, it, the world can end in the next 10 years, 20 years. I don't think it, it will take another 30 or 40 years, to be honest. But that's my opinion. OK, so it was prophesied that women will rule over men and children oppress the man. OK, so basically a woman will come, will come pass or pass a man. OK, or she would usurp the authority of a man so that was the prophecy so now we can definitely see it today with the feminism with the me too movement we can clearly see that is happening today so let's read ephesians 5 and we are going to read we're not going to read all of it but we're going to read from 22 to 23 
Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Right? So wives are to submit themselves to their own husband. So it's the same thing. A woman is supposed to submit herself to her husband. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. So let's read 24 25. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So a woman is supposed to submit to her husband in everything. OK, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Semicolon. So let's continue that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Sanctify normally means approve and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or, or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so it's very important that the order of marriage is kept and the order is christ uh, uh the head of christ is the most high right that's yahweh the ancient of days and the head of of the man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the woman is over the children. OK, so that is the order and that order must be kept. Now, what some wicked preachers do. Right. I've, on this channel, I've uh, there's a, there's a couple of preachers on here that have that kind of mentality. And I have done videos on it showing you know, illustrating where what they're doing, which is which is very, very wrong. And that is the main problem why all this marriage counselling that you get from church is a load of crap. Right. So don't do it. OK. And the main thing that I outlined in that video was this scripture, submitting yourselves one to another in fear of God. So this wicked preacher who doesn't really know the Bible, but acts like he does. And he is the marriage preacher. He uses this verse to say that a woman is not supposed to be submitting to her husband because this verse says, submit yourself one to another in fear of God. Now, what is submitting yourself one to another? Submitting yourself one to another is the man has his job to do. The Bible says the man who does not provide for his household is worse than an infidel. A man is supposed to provide for his family. Right. And a woman's job is is to be the help meet or to be the keeper at home or to be or to order the home that is her job okay so each person has their own things that they have to do a man's job is to love his wife and do with and give her affection where the woman's job is to respect her husband when she respects her husband that's how she loves her husband yeah so everybody has their own roles in which they have to do. So in doing that, you are submitting to each other because your wife is beholding onto you and you are beholding onto your wife and you are depending on each other to do your own roles to each other to keep the union together. OK, that's why I went through Ecclesiasticus um, 25 in the beginning, because the Lord likes unity. And therefore, unity, unity is between a, a unit. If everybody knows what they're supposed to do, then you now have unity because the Bible says can two walk together unless they're agreed. You must agree together to walk together. And if a husband and a wife is not agreeing together, it means that they're not following the order that is laid out in the Bible. But the submitting one to another is each person doing their own roles. And in so doing, they are submitting to each other. And in submission to each other, they're submitting to God. That is basically it. Because the next verse clears it up. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Right? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, let so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So it clears it whole thing up. And this wicked preacher is saying, oh, well, I'm not the head of my household. Christ is the head of my household. I don't tell my wife what to do. Well, he's supposed to tell his wife what to do. And he is this big time preacher, big time counselor that everybody in the Christian church goes to. It just shows you that the blind lead the blind in the Christian church. And that's the problem. 
1 Corinthians 11, 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is man and the head of Christ is God. So that's the order. OK, so that is the order, right, that we are supposed to follow. So let's now go to 1 Corinthians 7 to 9. So we read in 1 Corinthians 11, 7 to 9. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. So the woman is the glory of man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Okay, so the woman comes from the man, but the man didn't come from the woman. Okay, so that is the order. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. OK, so that is very clear that the woman is supposed to be in submission to her husband. So that's how you keep order in the home. Right. So let's now go to first Corinthians nine and we're going to read twenty one. To them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but unto the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. OK, so Paul is saying boldly in Corinthians that whatever he is saying is from Christ. Let's read again. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. So Christ is boldly saying that what he is saying is from the law of Christ. Okay, so it wasn't Paul's opinion. Paul didn't say, Paul didn't give an opinion, right? He didn't, it wasn't his opinion. It was New Testament commandments given by Christ. OK, so hopefully that has cleared that up. OK, so the scripture is the scripture on women that clearly states that a woman is not supposed to preach. OK, so we we're going to first we're going to go back to Timothy and we're going to read first Timothy and we'll read from nine all the way to 15. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. OK, because a woman is supposed to be in a humble spirit. Yeah. But which become it women professing godliness with good works. The good works is the good works of Christ. OK, so, so it's obeying Christ's commandments and having the fruits of fruits of the spirit in her. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So a woman is supposed to learn in silence. A woman is not supposed to be according herself a prophetess because there's no such thing as a prophetess in the New Testament. OK, the Lord stopped all of that. OK, and that was limited anyway in the Old Testament. But the Lord stopped that because, like I said before, each generation, the morality gets worse and worse and worse. Now we have the Me Too feminism, whereby women are now boldly usurping the authority of males and it doesn't just happen in western countries it doesn't just happen in edomite countries it, if you go all over the world this wine this doctrine this way of thinking right this worldly way of thinking is now seeping into all the countries all the nations in the world OK, this kind of feminism and women usurping the authority of her husband and women not doing what her husband asked her to do. And this whole Me Too movement and all this nonsense. Right. This has now seeped into modern day culture officially. So there's no such thing as a woman pastor. OK, or a woman preacher. So let's read it again. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I when is it with some subjection, no, all subjection. She's supposed to be fully submitted to her husband. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp the authority over the man, but to be in silence. A woman is not supposed to teach a man. That is a clear scripture. Going with all the other scriptures, she is not supposed to teach a man. Let's read it again. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp the authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. So how would a woman be saved in childbearing if they, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety? In other words, if she continues following the order that is laid out for her to do, if she continues by following in the laws of Christ, 
she will get salvation. So it's, let's read it again. And Adam was not deceived. Adam wasn't deceived. It was Eve that was deceived because Eve was the weaker vessel. And that's another re That's the main reason why a woman is not supposed to preach. Because in the Bible, there are a lot of mysteries in the Bible. A lot of hard things in the Bible to understand. And a lot of hard things to take in. Some of those things, you shake some Some of those things. When, I, when, I, when the Lord has shown me the, these things, you know. Uh, years ago or, 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 or whenever he showed me these things, you know, sometimes I would think, wow, couldn't believe that. Don't believe that. Wow. Well, not that I don't believe God. <laughs> I do believe God. But sometimes you think, wow, I didn't even know that was in the Bible, you know, and a woman generally is a sweet individual. You know, her spirit is sweeter, softer, kinder. Right. To be to compliment a man. Men in general are more aggressive. We more think in, in a straight line when a woman is more. She thinks in a way of she thinks about other people's feelings. OK, where, uh, you know, how would that person feel? How would that's how she thinks? Because she's more nurturing. Right. So the most high made a woman so that she's a nurturer. Right. So she can nurture the young. Meanwhile, the man is is out in the. In the open, fighting tigers and bears, metaphorically, right? He is a strong, he's made stronger physically and emotionally, right? So the woman is the weaker vessel. That's why a woman is not supposed to teach, right? Let's read it again. 13, for Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in transgression, right? The Adam and Eve story, the devil got to Eve and then Eve got to Adam. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. So a woman is supposed to be bearing children. If they continue in faith, she's supposed to keep the faith of Christ and charity, meaning love. Love being mean what I read at the beginning of this video in, in Ecclesiastes 25, the unity, loving your neighbors, loving your brethren, that kind of thing. That's charity and holiness with sobriety. So she's supposed to be in a in a full mind. She's supposed to have uphold holiness and sobriety. She's not supposed to be a drunkard. She's not supposed to be a drug taker. She's not supposed to be crazy. She's not supposed to be speaking to her husband in a crazy way. And she's supposed to be kind hearted, shame faced and with all subjection onto the man. So a woman is not supposed to be a pastor over men. That is very clear. I mean, it's, it's not possible to be clearer than that. Now, let's go to Matthew 7. And this will probably be the last scripture. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in you thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then would I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, that is very, very interesting. OK, so let's read it again. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, all these people in the Christian church, in the church, Lord, Lord, the hands up in the air, the music is going and again, getting all emotional, crying, kneeling down, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. What is the will of the most high's father in heaven? We read many of the what the most high's will is keeping the order of unity of marriage. Keeping the order. Keeping the order in marriage, keeping the order within your brother in loving your brother in stamping out strife as much as you can, loving your neighbor as you love yourself. The second most important commandment. That is how you do the will of your father in heaven. OK, first most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your strength and all your heart. Second most important commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Who is your neighbor? Someone of your own family of people. OK, so love your wife, love your brother, love your sister, love your husband as you love yourself. OK, let's read it again. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. 
So if you're a woman hearing this word and you're angry, right? You're angry when people say this. You have to check yourself. Do you believe in the most high? Really? Do you? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. In other words, you're burdened down with sin. You don't do what the Bible says, you know. You say you love the Lord, but do you provide for your family? Do you take care of your family? You say you love the Lord, but do you, are you a helpmeet to your husband? Are you a pillar of rest to your husband? Do you respect your husband? Are you a possession that the Bible says that you are? A possession just means, do you follow your, your husband? Those are the things the Lord is looking for. Doing the will of my father. Do you share the gospel? What do you do? Do you study to, to show yourself approved? Do you rightly divide the word of God? What do you do? Do you do the will of the father in heaven? Or do you just play church? You just go to church on a Sunday. You put your hands up and say, oh God, Jesus. Oh, And then the music is pumping and then it's pumping and pumping. And then you, you're jumping up and down and saying, I love you, Jesus, Jesus. You know, you do like you, like they do in Hillsong, you know, <laughs> they're jumping up and down and say, I love you, Jesus, Jesus. And then there's nothing is being taught because it's based on nothing. It's based, not based on anything. It's based on emotion. All right. So the Lord will say, will say, get away from me. I never knew you. Why? Because you never took the time to actually did do the research to see what is true and what is not true. So therefore you're worshipping another God, right? You are worshipping the image of the beast. The image of the beast is the doctrine that is connected to Esau. Okay? It's Esau's doctrine. Esau's God. <laughs> That's what you were worshipping. But you never took the time to, to actually rightly divide the word of truth, to seek the real God, the real God, the real black Messiah called Christ. You never took the time to work out that you are the Israelite in the Bible. You are the, you black people are Israelites. You, you are, have been given the promises of the kingdom to come. You are the judges and the priests in the kingdom to come. You are the gods in the kingdom to come. You will rule the whole world in righteousness in the kingdom to come. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. The Most High said ever, forever, forever, and even ever after that. that in other words, the world will no longer be switching from one nation to one rulership of one nation to the next like it currently is. Edom or Esau is the last kingdom to exist before the everlasting kingdom, which is Israel. You should know this. If you've been going to church for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you still debating whether a woman should preach and you, 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 Plump yourself in a church with a woman preacher, a woman pastor, and you say, oh, well, that was good. You preach well, preach. You, you preach, preach. You preach well, sister. Preach well, pastor. Pastor, whatever, Anita, or whatever, 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 you, whatever she calls herself, or Bishop uh, Sarah, or Bishop Susan, or whatever she calls herself. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as a female pastor. No such thing. She is the weaker vessel. So therefore, if you're un in a church pastored by a woman, what does that make you? Because you're under a weaker vessel. So whatever she's going to say to you will be would not help. Would not edify. Would not edify you as a man. You need to hear it from another man. Another man that's not a novice. A man that's able to rule his house well. A man that is seasoned in the scriptures. Praise God. Right? A woman is not supposed to preach. That is very, very clear. And stop debating with people. Debate. People are still debating whether you tithe or not. I mean, folks, you need to read your Bibles. Brothers and sisters, we need to read our Bibles. And we need to rightly divide the word of truth. We can't keep going round and round in circles debating nonsense. You know, basic things. These things are not mysteries in the Bible. They're, they, when you open the Bible and read it, it's very clear that you're not supposed to be tithing money. It's, it's very clear that the only 
pastor that we need to be having or bishop or deacon or any minister in a church is a male. Brothers and sisters, I do believe that I have edified you and I hope I have. Brothers and sisters, I hope you are greatly educated, if nothing else. Shalom.